can be seen. Now you'll see a message on your screen. So you can just say continue because I'm offering the replay to people who registered but can't make it. But if you don't have a notebook handy, be sure and get one because you will want to take notes and there may be some exercises that we do um, or that I recommend to you that you may want to even start working on while we're on the masterminds or the masterclass today. Is it nice weather where everyone is today? You can put it in the comments or you can unmute yourself and tell me. <laughs> we have a beautiful day here. I'm really glad. I think we do too. My sister just sent me a message asking if I was having my coffee outside. So I'm gonna have to go outside in a little bit. <laughs> you have your coffee? I've got my coffee. <laughs> No, I, I have my cup, so I've got to drink some more water first. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? We're going to go ahead and get started because I hate to keep you guys waiting. You showed up on time, so let's get started. So like I said, grab a notebook and pen because you will want that, I think. And... Um, also, what I would like for you to do before we get started is set an intention for being here today. What brought you here? What do you want to get out of this masterclass? I want to know, I want you to write it down in your notebook, but I would also like to know in the chat box because that will help me guide the presentation that I'm gonna do to make sure that I hit those pain points that you actually came to get answers for. So please, if you would, write down your intention on your notebook so you can always refer back to that and then look back to see if you did indeed get that from what, get the answer to what you came for today. And then put it in the chat box too for me so that I can make sure that I hit those pain points for you. I'll give you just a few minutes to go ahead and um, write those in the chat box. So for those just joining, um, we are writing down the intentions that we have for the workshop today. What do you want to get out of this masterclass? What is one of those pain points that you're experiencing that you want me to answer a question for? And go ahead and put that in the chat box as well, because that will help me be able to answer your questions or direct my conversation, direct my presentation to those needs that you have. So I'll give everybody just a few more minutes to write those intentions down and then I'm gonna jump in and get started because I'm super excited. I hear you, Stephanie. <laughs> Okay, I can't wait to see more intentions. Put them in the chat box. This is great. Oh wow, that's that's really a tough one. Alina, that's going to be great. I hope that you can find some answers here. What are the key elements to consider to successful establish a new business? Good question. Shannon, I always love your perspective as you niche down to messaging. Awesome. All right. So anybody else have a, um, want to write down an intention for being here today? Go ahead and put them in the chat box and I'll refer back to this um, 
as I'm going along, but I want to have them here just so that I know exactly where you guys are starting at and what you need from me today. So for those of you who haven't met me before, or we haven't had any interactions online yet to date, I'm Robin Graham. I'm a certified brand strategist and a business coach. I focus on building solid foundations for long-term brand and business success. And I do that using my success equation, mindset plus strategy plus action equals results. So I'm also host of the Second Phase podcast, and I am author of You, Me, and Anxiety, which will publish the beginning of 2022. I am a former photographer. I just retired from that role, and that was a huge announcement for me this week. So between that and this masterclass, my emotions, my excitement have been just like off the charts. <laughs> I have to move this for just a second. So I can get to my arrows. There we go. Okay. Can you guys see the full screen? Can you see the full slide? You can't see slides? Yes, I can see them. Okay. All right. Here we go. So let's first talk about the equation for success. And this is something that I have found has been very empowering for me, but also for my clients. We're going to talk today about each one of these components of this equation. So we have mindset, we have strategy, we have action. And together, those three things will produce results. One without the other two is not going to work. And two without one is not going to work. You have to have all three. And we're going to talk a lot about mindset and how that mindset really plays a part in discovering clarity and how you have to have clarity in order to build a solid foundation. Because without clarity, you're not going to be able to communicate to your audience so that they can understand exactly what it is that you do and that they are the people that you are meant to help. So we're going to dive pretty deep into all of this today. If you have questions, you can put them in the comments. I probably will not actually um, address them during the presentation, but I'll address them after the presentation. But please make sure that you have your notebook, your pen, pencil, and jot those questions down so that we don't miss them at the end. Okay, so first let's talk about mindset. And I do have notes laid out because there are things that I want to make sure I get that I don't forget. But we're going to start with this statement, your thoughts create your results. What do I mean by that? We know scientifically that everything in our body, mind, body, soul, all work together. And so when we talk about mindset and how our thoughts, and please excuse my puppy, she just grabbed his toy and is speaking. Um, mindset, mindset is so incredibly important. And the way our thoughts create our results is this. It goes back to the whole concept of cognitive behavioral therapy. So we have our thoughts and you can almost think of this like a triangle or even a, a triangle with a circle around it. But we have our thoughts and those thoughts are going to trigger our emotions and our feelings. Our emotions and our feelings are then going to trigger our behaviors and our actions. So if we put ourselves into a position where we are thinking about something and maybe it is, for example, starting a business. Maybe it's building a personal brand. And you think to yourself, I, I can't do this. I, I just, if I put myself out there, people are going to judge me. People are going to criticize me. Nobody's going to purchase from me. Somebody else is already doing this. So I can't provide value. What is going to happen? Your emotions, your feelings are going to go to a place where you feel sad, you feel down, you feel fear, you feel anxiety. And when you have those feelings, you will end up procrastinating. We know that when we have thoughts that we can't put ourselves out there if we're not perfect, then we're going to trigger fear and we're going to trigger anxiety. And that results in procrastination, which ultimately results in paralysis. So we stay in the same exact place we are. We don't move forward. We're just stuck. 
so we're going to talk about how we can shift those thoughts to make sure that as we're moving through a decision making process, as we're starting to put ourselves out there as a personal brand, as we're starting to build a brand and launch a business, you can have positive thoughts. And if negative thoughts creep in, you can reframe them and then work towards constant control of those thoughts. So what I like to do is focus on this method. So when you have a negative thought come in, and maybe it's that thought that somebody else is already doing this, I won't be able to do it as good, or I won't be able to get clients because somebody else is already in this space. You write down that thought, catch it first, just catch it. Really focus on it for a second and then challenge it. Is this realistic? Is it realistic that nobody's gonna hire me just because somebody else does this already? And we're gonna go deeper into that thought in a little while because comparison can be a real drawback for entrepreneurs, especially anytime you have to spend a lot of effort and energy online. So once you, once you catch that thought, you challenge that thought. Could this be proven in a court of law? Chances are no. And chances are it's not realistic. So ask yourself that question. Is this thought realistic? Can this thought be justified? So you catch the thought, you challenge the thought, then you change the thought. That's the hardest part, right? But if you think about it, if you take that thought and you write it down on a piece of paper, and then you write down the reverse of that thought. So you say to yourself, so and so is already doing this business. I'm not going to be able to get clients because they have all the clients. Look how successful they are. You change that thought to, I have a unique perspective. I have unique qualities that are going to allow me to help the people that I'm meant to help. The people that I'm meant to help are looking for me. They're just waiting for me to solve their problem. So now you've changed the thought. And what's going to start to happen is you will be able to then control those thoughts. And as you start controlling those thoughts, your confidence is going to build. So this is the basic model for any time you have mindset challenges, you're struggling with taking action, anything that is holding you back and leaving you in that place of procrastination. You can refer back to this model and it's going to help you move the needle forward in your business because you're going to be able to clear your mind and be able to take the action steps necessary to wrap your arms around that clarity that you need in order to build a personal brand and connect with your ideal audience. So that's a really quick, really quick summary of mindset. Before we dive into um, strategy and brand marketing strategy and all the things related to business, I want to touch on the differences between a brand, branding, and brand identity, because there is a significant difference and there's a lot, a lot of confusion out there. So there's a lot of people who think that your brand is your logo, your color palette, your mood board, your topography, but the reality is your brand is not what you think it is. And it's definitely not your logo. Your brand is what other people think, say, and feel about you. It's that perception that other people have about your business. Your branding is going to be how you communicate what makes you different, how you communicate your uniqueness, how you communicate what you do, how you do it, who you serve. It's going to be reflective of your energy and that energy that you put out into the world and how people connect with you and how they feel about you emotionally. So branding is controlling that perception, your brand, that other people are going to have of you. And then your brand identity are those assets that I mentioned before. Those brand assets are your logo, they're your color palette, and they are your topography. Those things that are going to help you be recognizable and become memorable. The reality is that your branding, everything that you communicate out, everything with your messaging has to be very clear, first of all, but that is going to go hand in hand with your brand assets to help you become recognizable and memorable. We know that once we're recognizable and we're memorable, people will trust us more, they'll be more confident in us, and then they will share us. So we have to have that basic definition of what a brand is first 
before we can create that branding, that communication, that messaging around ourselves and that energy that we want people to perceive from us that, and then mirror that with, or marry that with our brand assets so that we can truly become recognizable. And we'll, when we talk about that recognizability and that memorability factor, we have to go back to the fact that we need to be cohesive and consistent. So your brand assets are going to be cohesive across all of your platforms, from your website to your social media feeds. The more people see that, the more they're going to recognize you. The more they're going to know that as they're scrolling through, ah, that's Shannon. Ah, that's Stephanie or whoever. So it's really important to actually make sure that that cohesiveness goes across all platforms. And one of the easiest ways that you can do that and really become recognizable is to have a professional headshot or a photograph of yourself on your homepage of your website and that same picture or something very similar in your profile picture. So people can connect with your eyes and your smile. We know that, and we'll talk about this when we get into strategy as well, but we know that people don't buy products and services. People buy based on feelings, on emotions, on a connection. Trust determines buying practices. So everything we do in our branding efforts is going to reflect back to that, building that trust so that people will purchase from us. Um, does anybody have any specific questions related to this right now that you want me to answer before we move on? If not, just give me a thumbs up that everybody is, is good to go. And we will dive into some strategies. Let's see lots of thumbs up. All right. Okay, so let's dive into strategy. The very foundation of strategy is going to be clarity. We just talked about your brand and what that is. And we talked about your messaging. How do you find that clarity? You have to dig deep. You have to do exercises. And I like to refer people to my VIP model. That VIP model is your values plus your visions plus your passions are gonna reflect your purpose. Wherever those three things, your values, visions, and passions align, if you think of a Venn diagram, at some point, they're gonna overlap. If you make a list of your values, a list of your visions, and a list of your passions, somewhere they're gonna overlap. It may not be the exact same word, that is gonna overlap, but there's gonna be a connection. There's gonna be a connecting factor that is going to lead you to where you are meant to serve, the, the gift that you have, the journey you've been on for your whole life, all of those experiences and how they come together and how you can put those into practice to serve other people. If you remember, there's always gonna be someone who's a year behind you, six months behind you, 10 years behind you. There's gonna be someone that needs the tools that you have garnered throughout your journey, your experience, and everything you've gone through in your life to get to the point you are today. So reflect back on all of those things. I like to use the example, when I was a little girl, I loved to teach. You know how you played house or you played school? I was always the teacher. My dad had, I have no idea where he got them, but somewhere he had picked up these antique school desks, probably the one of the schools was getting rid of them. And so they, you know, my dad picked them up for probably next to nothing or probably for free, who knows. But I would have my sisters and our neighborhood girls sitting in chairs and I would teach them. And it's really funny how where I am today with coaching, I'm teaching. And my values are, you know, I love to serve. So when you think of, you know, that value of service, you think of the, the um, vision of me teaching. And then you think of my passions of helping other women come into their own, like it all comes together, right? To be reflective of what I'm doing today, helping people build strong foundations for long-term success. So that's just an example of how you can look at things from those three areas of your life. And they are going to be kind of a driving force for you in terms of coming into that place of clarity and creating your messaging. So in that messaging, and when you look at that clarity, you have to know who it is that you want to serve, who it is that you're going to be able to help, who it is that needs your help, 
who it is that is just waiting for you to come along and solve their problem so that they can turn around and be the hero in their own journey. What is it that you have the skill sets to do? What is it that you've had life experiences with that you can now teach someone else or supply for someone else if you're a product business? And your why, why do you want to do whatever it is that you want to do? How is that fueling you? What, why does someone else need your help? Mapping out the quest, these questions is going to help you come up with very clear messaging so that people can truly resonate with exactly you, with the person you are and the service or product that you provide. And then your how, how do you solve the problem for your people? Maybe it is a product business, maybe it's a service business. It could be any number of things, but how do you help your people? How can you help your people? If you're struggling with that, how will I, how can you? And then break it down from there. But I always suggest that you go back and look at your experiences and where you feel, and you know, the word expert has some, like negative connotations. Now people think of it, well, what makes them an expert? But here's the thing. Even if you don't have a degree in something, even if you have not studied something under the umbrella of someone else and, and a school or whatever, your life's journey has brought you to the place you are today. Every experience you've had, every personal interaction you've had, every book you've read, all of those things come together to give you the answers to your who, to your who, what, why, and how. All right, so now we've broken down clarity and hopefully that exercise of taking your values, visions, and passions and mapping them out will give you a little bit at least of guidance to move you forward. Okay, so let's dive into strategies. There are six areas of focus that I like to bring to everyone's attention when we talk about building a strong foundation for long-term success. First and foremost, I'm going to say website. And here's why. If you think about going on vacation and walking down the streets of a cute little village and you see you're on a mission because you know that in this little village, certain things are made. And you know that you want to take that home as a souvenir, or you want to buy that as a gift for someone to take back home. You're walking down the street, and on the right-hand side of the street, you see this darling little shop. The window boxes have fresh flowers in them. It's just painted perfectly on the outside. There's someone standing in the doorway with a smile on her face, ready to greet you. And it's very inviting. You peek inside, and you see everything is neat, nice and neat and tidy. You look across the street and they have a sign. They sell the exact same thing, the exact same product, but the picket fence out front is all rackety. It needs painting. There's a couple boards missing. The flowers in the flower boxes are dead. The, you peek in, the store looks completely disheveled. The shelves are in disarray. And you think, oh my goodness, like, no, I, I'm not going in there. And you almost automatically are lured into the place that looks nicer. It looks more professional. It looks more well-kept. If you try to run your business from Facebook or Instagram, it's the same perspective. People want to work with someone who is professional, who is demonstrating that they really care about communicating and connecting with their audience, their clients. And taking that level of quality to have a website is very important for people when they are determining whether to work with you or work with someone else who does the exact same thing. Your website is a place for you to have concrete connection, meaning your copy is gonna be written so that your people, the people that you are meant to serve, the people that you want to serve, are gonna know that you're talking directly to them. Your energy on your website is gonna be present and you can do that Number one, having pictures, but number two, having a video on your homepage to welcome the people into your business, to welcome them into your life, your, your personal brands. They can truly feel that sense of energy and how you are different from the other people that do the exact same thing you do. 
the reality is nothing we do is new. There's somebody out there that does exactly what we do, but we bring the uniqueness. We are what make our business different from everybody else out there. So it's very important to let people see that because it doesn't matter that there are, you know, a million business coaches out there. Nobody has their business the exact same way I have my business because they don't have my personality. They don't have my energy. They don't have my strategic thinking. They don't have the same tools, the same experiences, the same energy and all of those things together. So I'm using me as an example, just because that's easy. Um, but you can put yourself into that same exact example. So your website becomes, if you think of your, your personal brand as a tree trunk, so you have your personal brand and that's your core, right? That's that, that inner ring of the tree trunk. That's your personal brand. Then you have the tree trunk. Your website is going to become that tree trunk. Everything else we're going to talk about today is branching off of that website, the core. And they're all going to be equally important, but they're different. And they're going to bring people to your business differently. But it's important to remember that that core, the, the, the foundation, the structure is going to be based from your website and your personal brand. So let's do, jump into blogging. And a lot of people think that blogging is dead or not effective anymore. But I question that because there is a lot of power in blogging. If you have your website, whether it's professionally done or you do it yourself, but you make sure that you have search engine optimization, which we're going to get to in a minute. If you have that set up on your website, you have Google Analytics set up on your website, your website is going to be a machine to help you determine who your clients are, where they're coming from, um, what is working, what's not working. And blogging is part of that. You create a strategy around blogging and you can repurpose that content across everything else that you do. That becomes the basis, the foundation for your content. So blogging has a lot of strategy in and of itself, just like your website does. And when I talk about your website and then blogging, it's we merge them together and the strategy becomes like a breadcrumb trail. So you have the website, you have your homepage. Maybe you have a video of yourself introducing yourself, saying, you know, giving people that introduction of your, your why, your, your who, your what, your when, your how, all that stuff to bring them in. And then you have obviously copy on your website. And that copy is also going to bring them in, connect with them. But you have an opportunity here to keep them on your website a little bit longer using strategy. That first strategy is going to be that homepage has a link. One of your keywords, key phrases is going to be linked to a blog post about that keyword or key phrase. And from there, they're going to go read that blog post. And then within that blog post, you're going to have another keyword or key phrase that you have another blog post for. And you can send them to that. And then you can send them to your contact page at the end. Every single page of your website, every single blog post should have a call to action. And those call to actions can vary from page to page, and they should vary from page, page to page, but you want to give them opportunities to find more information, more value, more educational material, inspiration, whatever it is, on your website to keep them on there longer, because all of those actions are going to keep people there longer, and Google is going to help, that's going to help Google rank you higher. So you want to make sure that you, you have a strategy in place. It's not just, oh, I'm going to slap a blog up today. It's, okay, I'm going to have a blog post that is at least 300 words, preferably closer to 1,000. You can go up to as many words as you want, but Google prefers blog posts. They're going to send blog posts out that have more value and more information. So if you, maybe you know this already, but if you think of Google as, or the, the interweb as like a big spider web. There's a reason they call it the web, right? Um, Google sends out spiders and these little spiders crawl that web. So someone types in a question and then Google sends out these little spiders to find the answer to that question. And if a spider goes to a website and it has a blog post that maybe has the keyword, but it's only 150 words, and there's not a lot of depth to it, and it doesn't have any backlinks, it doesn't have any internal links, that spider's gonna go crawling someplace else for an answer. So it's really important to use these strategies to build that foundation to help your website work for you 
and work with you to bring people into you. And that's how you're going to get Google to favor you over anybody else in your space. So SEO, when we talk about SEO, search engine optimization, you have opportunities on every single one of the pages of your website and every single blog post on your website to have your SEO green, like a green light for go, it's good. When we talk about doing that, you want to have a keyword or key phrase for every single page on your website. You don't wanna duplicate the same keyword key phrase on every single page of your website. You want to have something unique. And that's why it's nice to have phrases because you can actually ask a question. So if you go to Google and say, like for me, I can go to Google and I can type in personal brand and I can see the questions that people are searching there. I can also use other tools like Google Think or Answer the Public or Quora or other platforms to actually discover what people are searching for related to the topic that I want to write a blog post about. And then I can use that question that people are frequently searching for and I can use that as my keyword or key phrase. So the next time someone goes to search that content, if I have a well-written blog post and the SEO is established on it, Google is gonna send it out for people to find the answer to that question. So I hope that helps. I, it, SEO is actually a lot more complicated than what I'm, I'm saying here, but these are just the little bitty tidbits that you could actually start employing and make your website work for you much better than what it's working today. So then let's talk about email marketing. And this is a strategy that I absolutely love. And I know um, if you're like me, I, over the years I have, oh, I want that free. Oh, I want that. Or, oh, I'm going to buy that. Or I want that 10% coupon. And my email box gets flooded with emails. Nonsense most of the time. But here's the thing. When you have a following and you are providing value to your audience, they are going to stick around for you. They want to learn from you. They want to connect with you. And they eventually may hire you or they're going to know someone else who needs your services. You own your email marketing list. We don't own social media. We don't own our followers. Those followers can drop off at any point in time. Like, have you ever opened Instagram and, all, you know, you thought you had this number of followers and the next day you have 20 less followers? It, there's, there's so much to that. There's bots. There's people who just follow to get a follower. All of those things that happen. So we don't own any of that. And all of that could go away tomorrow. So number one, if you're putting information on social media, make sure that you're also saving that information somewhere that you can repurpose that. Make sure that that goes into a blog post or it goes into an email that you can refer back to later, that you can actually ask or retrieve that content later to repurpose it. Because chances are that with social media at any given time, you want to access that information and it's gone. So be mindful of that. You own your email list. You own that, that contact list that you can reach out to and have a touch point at any time you want. And if people unsubscribe from your email list, that's okay. They weren't your people. They weren't going to hire you in the long run anyway. They didn't appreciate the value that you were providing. So again, there's a strategy to email marketing. And how do you get email addresses? Well, you create something to give them, something for free, something that is going to help them, but not answer all of their questions. It's going to give them enough information that it can be a launch pad for them, a starting point for them. They're going to subscribe to your email list, and then you can continue to provide value for them, educate them, entertain them, inspire them, share stories with them, help them get to know you better. When you create something that you're going to give away for free, we typically call that a lead magnet. Some people call it a freebie. But when you create something like that to give away, you want to create a welcome series or a nurture series so that you let people into your world. That first one is going to email is going to be something to deliver the, the, the goodie, the freebie, the, the lead magnet. Then you're going to create something to tell a little bit about your story and how you got to where you are today and how you how you've mastered whatever it is that you're doing now to help other people. And then that third one is going to be your bio, a little bit more about your background and, and a little bit more about your story. And you're going to continue this sequence to get them 
into your world. So they get to know you, they understand you, they feel your energy, they see your passion all through the written word through your email, email marketing or email nurturing series, welcome series. Um, and then at the end, you can mention your, the services, the products that you provide. So you're not selling. But the one thing I want to say about selling is you have to look at selling as actually serving. Because if you're not ultimately selling, and I'm going to put that in quotes, because I do believe that when you have a strong personal brand, you can sell without selling. And that's the whole point with email marketing. And that's the whole point of building relationships through your blogging and through your social media is that you can build relationships and people will begin to trust you because you are recognizable and the things you're saying and the way you present yourself, they're memorable. And then people are going to trust you more. They're going to have confidence in you and they're going to buy from you. So let's jump now from email marketing to PR. And PR can be pretty intimidating. And do you have to have a PR agent to have PR? No, you don't. We're pretty fortunate in this day and age because of the digital world. And there is something called, there's a lot of things that you can do to get PR opportunities. But I'm going to say with every PR opportunity that you want to get your hands on, build a relationship first. And why do you need to build that relationship first? Because you don't want to just cold call someone and say, hey, I can tell your audience about this and think that they're going to bring you in because they're not. People want to know about you before. They want to get to know you. They want to know that you appreciate them, that you appreciate their content. And this is where social media comes in. Before you start building a PR platform or a PR strategy, at the same time, hand in hand, build relationships, engage with other people. If there is someone you want to be on their podcast as a guest, build a relationship with them, like their content, leave them a rating and review on their podcast. Send them a DM and say, and say, hey, I really enjoyed this episode. And tell them what you got out of that episode. As you start to build these relationships, people are going to automatically take a look at your profile, see what you do. And then you're going to build that relationship so that when you do pitch them, they're going to be like, you know what? She's so supportive of me. I'm going to have her on. I think her message would resonate with my audience. But make sure as you're creating this PR strategy that when you're pitching people, you're pitching in a way that tells them exactly what benefit their audience or they can get from you. You've got opportunities to pitch to um, traditional media, and you've got opportunities to pitch to podcasts. You can do guest blogging. You can do collaborations with people as a means of PR. So keep in mind that this is free marketing. And so when I say every business needs a PR strategy, it is because it's free marketing. You have an opportunity to reach the masses, to reach other people's audiences that are well beyond your audience. And there may be some overlap, of course. I know um, Shannon Baker is on here with me today. and We have a lot of overlap in our audiences, but we have both been on each other's podcasts. And those are the types of collaborations that are evergreen. They don't go away. You build those relationships and then you have opportunities long-term to continue to communicate, to continue to share each other and to continue to share the content that is on those PR prospects that you have been accepted to. Okay, so now let's talk about social media. Um, I love social media sometimes and I hate social media sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's that thing on my to-do list and I'm just cringing and I don't wanna do it. Part of that is fear. Part of that is I'm putting myself out there and I'm being vulnerable and vulnerability is something that is not easy. And so that's one of the reasons I don't like it. The other reason I don't like it is because it's a time suck. I get in there and sometimes I get lost and I'll be in there for too long and I'll get distracted. Um, it's very easy to do. So I have to set limits around it. I can't just say, oh, I'm going to go on Instagram. And so I, I have to actually have an intentional practice around social media. When I'm taking my daughter to an appointment or I'm going to sit and, you know, while she's at practice or something like that, I'm going to take a book to read, or I'm going to take my laptop, or I'm even going to take my calendar and, and map, out con map out content. Because otherwise I can go down this really dangerous slope on social media and start comparing myself. Imposter syndrome creeps in. And all of those things that are then going to cause me to be even more fearful of putting myself out there. Because when I compare myself to other people, it does nothing to build me up. 
it just breaks me down. So be very mindful of how you use social media. If you are struggling at all with being on social media and falling into that comparison trap, don't follow people that are in your same space. We say, oh, I'm gonna follow them for inspiration. But what ends up happening is you get sucked into what they're doing and then you think you have to do what they're doing or you have to do something the way they're doing it. And that's not it at all because that defeats the purpose of your personal brand. Your personal brand is about you and all those unique qualities that you have, those things that differentiate you from everybody else in your space. So use social media to build relationships. It all goes back to relationships. Eventually, you can sell on, so, on social media, but that shouldn't be your first goal with social media. Your goal with social media should be to provide value, to engage, to connect, and to build relationships. And those relationships will ultimately end up being opportunities for you, whether it's collaboration, whether it's referrals, whether it is a client converting. But use social media with caution and don't put all your eggs in the social media basket. Go back to your website, use social media to funnel people to your website, funnel them to that lead magnet that's going to be distributed from your website, build relationships on social media, and then direct them to your other offerings from your website. All right, I can't close out this masterclass without talking about processes. I am a big process person and Shannon is a process guru. <laughs> I saw you smile, Shannon. Um, so when we talk about processes, if you are implementing strategies in your business, there are going to be things that you're going to be doing repetitively. Anything that you are doing repetitively is something that someone else could do and take over for you. It's also something that if you aren't able to come to work someday for one day or a week or a month, who is going to step in to take over for you? And how are they going to be able to do it if you don't have processes in place? So it's really, really important to have processes that are going to help you not only follow the processes for every single thing that you do, but then let somebody else step in to help you. And automation is the key. If there's anything that you do time and time again, even if you only are going to do it five times, make it automated, if at all possible. So that, and that automation can be so simple, something from even bringing in new clients, your onboarding, your offboarding processes, your calendar, all of those things can be automated so that you don't have to spend a ton of time doing the same step over and over and over again. So let's talk about action. It's the last component of the equation. If we don't have a positive mindset, we're not going to take, take action. I use the example of our thoughts, if they're negative, then our emotions are going to be negative and we're going to procrastinate and we're going to be paralyzed and we're going to stay in the same place and we're not going to move the needle forward on our business. Even if we have a positive mindset and we have a strategy, if we don't take action, we're not going to move the needle forward on our business. Action is going to be the key. If you have a positive mindset and you have a strategy, but you're sitting on the couch watching Netflix or Lifetime or one of those reality shows, your business isn't going to grow. You're not going to build relationships. You're not going to convert your audience to clients. So action is going to be key. And sometimes that action is really hard, especially in the beginning when you're trying to discover clarity. But that action has to be taken. And it's baby steps. Don't think that because you take action today, success is going to come tomorrow. It doesn't work that way. You have to build that solid foundation. And taking one baby step at a time is how you're going to eventually achieve that success. Okay, so I've given you my spiel. Now I would love to connect with you. So I offer a free mentorship session. It's 20 minutes. You can book a call with me. I would love to chat with you if you have specific questions related to your business. You can access anything related to me and I'm going to move this up so you guys can see everything here. Everything to access me is therobingrand.com forward slash resources. Um, the Upscale Mastermind is launching again. We will be starting January 5th and registration is open. 
that is a group coaching program. And I partner with Audrey Wolf, who is an Instagram coach, content creator. Um, and we partner for um, building personal brands, more or less for that we're building or we're helping people really build their online presence more than anything else. The Female Entrepreneur Insider Facebook group is another way to connect with me. I do live trainings in there. I do promo days where you can actually promote your business. But more importantly, it's for connecting, building relationships with other people in the group, asking questions and getting answers, getting other people's opinions, doing polls so that if you have a question, you're not sure which way to go with something, you can join the group and ask there. The second phase podcast is my podcast. I would love to have you listen to that. There is so much information there, um, so much value from, I do solo episodes, but I also have a ton of expert guests and so much information for you to learn there. Instagram, LinkedIn, um, you can download the free ebook, How to Build a Solid Foundation for Long-Term Brand and Business Success. And that is all, like I said, on my website, therobertbrand.com forward slash resources. So I am going to open the floor now for questions. And I see that there is one question already in the chat box. I just need to move the chat, bo oh, chat box over somehow. And there we go, so that I can see everything. So Stephanie Gill asked, what are your thoughts on separating your personal social media presence from your business social media presence? That's a good question, Stephanie. And I've never been one to put a lot of personal stuff on my Instagram. I have a business Instagram. And if you are a business, you need a business Instagram because that gives you more credibility and it gives you different functions within Instagram. You can see analytics and, um, you know, learn about your followers and you just have different functionality with a business account. So I do encourage you to have a business account no matter what. Um, as far as having a second account, a personal account, I don't. And the reason I don't is because I don't want to manage two accounts. I used to have multiple, multiple accounts and I, I couldn't keep up. And so I have my one account. Keep in mind, if you're a personal brand, people want to get to know you. They want to see the inside of your world. You don't have to put anything out there that's too personal, too private, like my kids really don't want me to put them on my Instagram feed, but every now and then I will because I'm a mom and being a mom is why I'm an entrepreneur. That's why I gave up corporate because I wanted to have that flexibility with my kids. So being a mom is part of who I am. It's part of my personal brand. So I do incorporate my personal stuff, my travel, um, anything that's related to me that's going to give my audience insight into my world, my personality, my energy, and how I live and why anything that would help them connect with me, I put on my, on my business Instagram because I'm a personal brand. And so you can absolutely do that. Some people like, I know Shannon has a separate podcast Instagram, and then she has her business Instagram. Some people will do that. And there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I personally just don't have the time to manage to and create content for two. So I just have the one. Oh, thank you, Teresa. I'm so glad you found it helpful. So you guys, I want to hear from you and feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions verbally. You can raise your hand. You can do whatever, you know, whatever is going to help you to ask a question. Um, I would love to, I'm just going to try to change my view here. So I can see more people. I think what I need to do is stop sharing maybe. There we go. So if you have a question, go ahead and feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat box. Either way, this is your opportunity. If you have a burning question about your business, how, how you can grow, anything that you want to do or need to do to make your business grow faster or anything, please ask me. I'm here for you for the next 10 minutes or so. Nothing. I answered everybody's questions. <laughs> okay, let's go back to your intentions. I would like to know what your intentions were and were your intentions met when you came in today? And you can just give me a thumbs up in the, com in the chat box if you want. You can tell me in the chat box, whatever works for you. Robin, uh, hi. Hi. It's Elena from Ukraine. So hi. I'm quite 
far away from you. <laughs> you are, yes. What time is it there? <laughs> it's uh, half past, oh, it's almost uh, seven o'clock. Okay, not too bad, it's still early. No, it's not, it's not uh, in the morning, it's in the no, evening. I know, it's in the <laughs> evening, but it's not like bedtime yet, is what I meant. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> First of all, many thanks for your amazing presentation. It's very well structured, and I've heard a lot of uh, you in, through your podcast. I'm listening to it quite uh, regular. I really enjoy it. It's unbelievable. Thank you. Uh, Thank there you. are a lot of useful information on your web. Thank you. On your I website really as well, that. which might be useful for. Uh, say that. Say that again. I didn't. Um, I have a question for to you. Yes, please. Um, concerning the. I have a question to you. Yes, go can ahead. Yes, I can hear you. You're cutting in and out though, so. Okay. Um, when you set an actions, uh, basically you need to understand what is the look of success for you, right? So how to define this look of success? What is supposed to be uh, the tangible uh, things that you can say, yes, this is success for me, or no, I didn't reach it, or I haven't reached it, or like, something like that. Well, when you, you're going to have to go back to your goals at that point. Do you have a goal of reaching a certain number of clients or do you have a monetary goal? And really, you know, people have often asked me, how do I define success? And it's a very individual definition. For me, defining success means that I have made an impact on someone else's life. I have helped someone else advance their life or business. Success to me doesn't mean money, in, but if, what it means to me is that I've been able to help someone else and make an impact. So at the end of the day, at, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, I can look at what I have done over the course of that week and what action have I taken and did, did, that, did that action produce a result for me? Did that action have an impact on another human being? And did that action produce another result for me? And, you know, I, I look at the whole picture, but it's, you know, looking at statistics, like, did I drive traffic to my podcast? Did I drive traffic to my, mm -hmm. my website? And what are those statistics? statistics? And did they grow from last week to this week? So there's a lot of different measurements that you can take to see whether or not you're having an impact and whether or not those actions are actually actually working for you. Does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, one more thing, just to clarify it. Should we have a short-term uh, like checkpoints or it's better to have a long-term strategy and long-term goals and try to reach the long-term? What is the best way to have a, like short-term achievements or still keep in mind long run? So it, there's nothing wrong with having a long-term goal. If you want to reach six figures, seven figures, if you want to, you know, if your entire goal is to make enough money to buy a beach house and retire at 40, that's a long-term goal. But to get to that goal, I suggest you break things down into short bits. Take three things that you can do in a 90-day period to get to the next 90 days. Don't ever go beyond that. And the reason I say that is because you get overwhelmed, you get frustrated. And when that happens and anxiety sets in, you're gonna stop and then you're not gonna keep going forward. So I always say, break it down into short bits. It's like the rule of three, three things, three actions, three goals, three strategies in a 90 day period, and then move on once you've accomplished those. Yeah, clear. thank you very much. It's very useful. Mm -hmm. Sure. Anybody else? Questions? Anybody want to say anything about their intention and whether or not you found this helpful? Oh, wait, Stephanie, or Renee says, how do you determine a budget to successfully launch a new business? Yes, you definitely fulfilled my goal for today. Thank you, Renee. So that is going to be the budget question. That's a big one. And that is going to be very independent, business independent, whether or not you're going to need brick and mortar, whether you're not, whether or not you're going to have staff, will those staff and employees need benefits? 
Um, will they be just part time? Will you need insurance? Will you need, um, you'll also need legal fees. Anytime anyone is starting a business, I recommend hands down you have an LLC. The reason you want to have an LLC is this it's very simple. If you have an LLC, somebody decides to sue you, maybe they fell while you were working with them. Maybe they feel like you gave them false information. Maybe they feel like you didn't help them, whatever, who knows, the world is too happy. Somebody goes to sue you. If you don't have an LLC, they can sue your personal assets, not just your business assets. So I always suggest you have an LLC for your business. It's a limit, limited liability corporation policy. Insurance, you definitely want to be insured, especially if you have a brick and mortar or you're delivering a product or service to someone. Um, you just never know what could happen. And so those two things I think are very important. Contracts, you're going to have to invest in contracts. You want to have a legitimate, legally reviewed contract to make sure that you are not held liable for something that you say out of good intentions, but someone misconstrues or whatever else could happen. So you wanna make sure that you have a contract in place. And that is also very important for setting boundaries around your life and your business. The contract will map out, you know, specifically, I am available from nine to three to answer your questions. And after that point in time, I'll get back to you within 24 hours or 48 hours, whatever your boundary is. But you also want to, set those limitations and expectations from the client perspective. And that's done through a contract. So you have to have, what I always suggest is to make a list, everything you're going to need. So you're going to need legal services. You're going to need insurance policy. You are going to have to determine, are you going to have a brick and mortar? Is there equipment you need to, to, um, oh, Raquel's just joining. Um, is there equipment that you're going to have to purchase? Is there, um, you know, even like online services, you're going to have to invest in potentially a calendar app, an email marketing program. Um, maybe you need a new computer. It, it could be any number of things. So make a list of anything that you think you might need and then map out what those estimated costs are and then create your budget from there. What you also need to factor in though is you need to save for taxes. And you need to also pay yourself. So what I have done, and I know several other entrepreneurs have done, is have multiple bank accounts. And I know that sounds like a pain and it sounds complicated, but now most banking is done online anyway. But have a bank account for your business where funds come in, where people pay you. Then have your bank account for savings, for taxes. And then have a bank account for paying yourself. So I don't know if I've completely answered your question, but hopefully I gave you enough that you can start formulating a list of any expenses you might have and create a budget around that. And what I would suggest is create a budget for starting and then create a budget for your monthly expenditures and what you anticipate will be coming in from clients. And then you can map that out, you know, map out your even your, your long-term and short-term goals as far as how many clients you're gonna need to make enough money to cover those monthly expenses. And Raquel, I see you just joined. We are actually wrapping up, but you're on the email list, so I will send you the replay. <laughs> okay, if nobody thank else you. has... Oh, thank you ahead. so much. I was... I, I was... I want me to go back to my video. I was completely off on the time. <laughs> I thought it... <laughs> I, I was I saw eleven o'clock and I was sticking at eleven o'clock in my time. Oh. My time. So that's why I'm late or I would have been here on time. So yeah, I'll that's watch the, I'll watch the replay. That's okay. I'll send you the replay. No worries. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions, comments? I'm welcome to just open it up to discussion at this point too. Nope. Okay then. Thank you to everyone for being here. This was so much fun for me and I love meeting new people and seeing new faces. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This was fabulous. Everybody have a great day.
You thank you very much. Thank it you. was incredible. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.